So this is part th uh, three of our three-part video. We've seen the high-level um, design of our application, then we've walked through the source code, and now what we want to do is um, run the server application and see how it works. So I'm going to come over here and start up my server process. Okay, so now it's running, and you'll recall it was running on port 8100. So let's pull up Firefox and go visit that um, website. So I've got it running locally here. This is localhost 8100. And by default, you'll recall that we had some uh, code in our application um, class that generated the default page, and that's what we're seeing here. And let's go ahead and click on this link. And if you take a look at the URL, you'll see this is in the pattern um, of widgets without an ID. So this is the one that generates a view of all the widgets that my web server is currently um, storing for me. But of course, we just started the process, so there are none. So let's, let's create a new widget. Okay, And when we go back to that view, now we see a new widget. And let's create another one. Okay, so now I have a couple of these. And if I were to add the number, the ID of the widget, on the end of this URL, you'll remember that we would then get the representation of a single widget. And there it is, just its ID and its name. So, so far I've been simply doing HTTP gets and posts and all the representations have been coming back as HTML. But let's say we'd like to actually get back JSON representations. So how do we do that? So first of all, um, we have to understand how the client application when it talks to a web service um, specifies what type of representation it would like to get back from the server. So here in my um, Firefox browser, uh, I have the Firebug plugin installed. So this is just a Firefox extension um, that you can download uh, from the Firefox help menu. And Firebug will let us actually take a look at the headers of the HTTP request that the browser is sending out. So I'll go back to the top level here, and I'm just going to click this bug icon and this will show up once you've um, installed Firebug and I'm going to make sure that the net tab here is enabled so I can actually see um, the request and then I'm going to go ahead and let's just ask for the uh, widget number one representation okay so here's my request down here and if we scroll down to the request headers you'll see this accept tag so the accept tag I'm sorry, the accept header is how the client tells the server what type of representation. And the very first thing on the line here on the header is text HTML, which makes sense because browsers um, are concerned with fetching HTML, which they know how to render um, on behalf of the user. So if we want to access the, and, and that's what the browser does by default, so if we want to access the web service and get JSON back, um, we're going to have to set this header to indicate that we want JSON. And instead of doing this through the browser, which is pretty difficult to do, we're going to run a uh, utility, a command line utility called curl. And curl will let us interact with any HTTP server, and we've got a lot of control over the headers and so forth. So in a more realistic situation, just keep in mind that what we're doing here with curl is what your client application that was interacting with the web service would be doing when it sends up these requests. So in order to use curl, I'm going to have to open up my terminal window. And curl lets me set a number of options. So the first option I'm going to use is the minus V, which is verbose mode. So it will show me all the details of both the HTTP request as well as the response. The next thing I want to do is set the header. So what I need to do is use the minus capital H option 
and now I can provide the accept header and I want to set it to um, to uh, the JSON mind type. Okay, and now that I have that, all I need to do is specify the URL that I want to fetch. And by default, curl is going to send up an HTTP GET to this URL. Okay. And there you see the actual uh, results. I issued a GET, and I set the header here to um, the JSON MIME type and then my response succeeded and you can see the headers of the HTTP response and then the actual body of that message is shown right here and sure enough it's a JSON representation of my collection of widgets. Just for fun let's see what happens if we um, change the MIME type back to HTML using curl. Okay, and sure enough, now instead of getting the JSON, we've changed our header, I'm sorry, our MIME type and the accept header to text HTML, and we're getting back HTML. Let's try something different. Let's use curl to send up an HTTP put to actually change the name of widget number one. So we can say curl minus V, and then we have to use the minus X option to specify that we want to use the HTTP verb put instead of the default get. And then we simply specify the uh, new name using the minus D option. Okay, and now let's see if we actually had that um, change take place. So let's just do a, a get And sure enough, here we can see in the HTML representation that came back that the name was actually updated. Let's use HTTP delete now to actually delete widget number one. And then in order to determine if the delete happened. Let's just fetch a uh, list of all the widgets. Oh shoot, we had the wrong UR URL here. We actually asked, asked for widget slash one and I really wanted just slash widget, so let's do that again. And there we go, we only have widget number two that is left. This brings us to the end of our three-part tutorial on walking through a HTTP server that we built using the RESTlet framework. And once again, you can get the source code that was shown in these videos um, if you look in the uh, YouTube program notes. And in terms of additional information, we'd encourage you to go visit the um, RESTlet.org website where you'll find the actual framework itself to download and lots of other um, tutorials and documentation. And then uh, finally there's also a good, a really good book out there if you don't understand RESTful web services or you want to beef up on this area. We highly re recommend the RESTful web services book published by O'Reilly. Thank you.